typically dark vision, or for a gifted mortal, the ability to cast dancing lights at will, or darkness or fairy fire <laughs> once every 48 hours. Hail and well met and welcome back to more Realms lore with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sir Ed Greenwood. Hello. And today we're talking about two things that we get a lot of requests for uh, on this channel, one of which is the drow, and the second of which is deities. So you mix the two together, I think you should be pretty stoked about this video because I am. Ed, you want to fill them in a little bit more? Sure. Yes. This video is called Worshipping Huron, and it's a deity of the drow that's been neglected so far, so we're going to find all about what it's like to worship Varon in the realms today. And if you're enjoying videos like these, please consider becoming a protector of the realms by heading on over to patreon.com slash edgreenwood. And your support there not only directly supports Ed, but it also helps contribute to us being able to continue to make these videos for you here like we are today. So for now, please enjoy this video on Varon. The realms is a big world and its lore is deep and rich in places and little more than a threadbare cloak in others. But I have been working on it for 60 years now, and for the last 37 of them, so have a lot of other people, some of them very talented creators. Our job will never be finished. If the realms is to feel alive in our minds, it must always be changing, its lore always expanding. One of the best ways to do this isn't sitting down to create whatever seems cool to us right now. It's to answer your lore questions, the things you need to know about to run your realms campaign or craft your own stories and lore the realms. So here is an answer video. And this time around, we're answering these queries. It's been stated in realms lore that there are non-drow followers of Varan. How and why do non-drow follow him if one of Varan's teachings is drow supremacy? How are they okay with that? And an obvious question that follows, can non-drow become priests of Varan? So here are the quick answers. There are non-drow who believe that the world is as it is right now, their local experiences of it at least, is so bad or inferior that it would likely be better under drow leadership as Varon and not Lulz sees it and promotes it. And yes, non-drow can become Varon's clergy if they are willing to be subservient to drow within his church. Yet, of course, you'll want more detail than that, the whys and not just the whats. So let me add another layer. Disaffected with local rule and society individuals of all races can follow Varon to try and bring about a local shakeup and change. So far, Varon's rare non-drow followers are mainly humans in cities, Athcadla, Baldur's Gate, Shirtala, and Zazesper in particular, though there are many in Waterdeep who have thus far escaped the notice of the lords and the guilds as a force, as opposed to lone crazed individuals who want local rulers gone, or nobles humbled, or guilds shattered, and so on. Nondrow can become priests of Varon, but it's very rare, as the deity is inherently suspicious of Nondrow, and because many drow, holding similar suspicions, would refuse to accept, so train and work with, such an individual. So if someone wants to embrace the faith of Varon in service, that is, becoming an ordained priest, they are going to have to demonstrate personal support for Varon's aims, then appeal in prayer to the deity directly. Varon will respond, manifesting an avatar, and flood the supplicant's mind with his own, an excruciatingly painful experience that may well drive the supplicant mad. His arrogance and force of presence is terrible to most mortal minds to probe their thoughts and memories personally. Varon must be certain of their motives and their loyalty. He dare not allow a traitor into the ranks of his relatively when measured against the ever-present malicious darkness that is the worship of his mother, Lulz, small and weak church. If he finds treachery, he will typically destroy the mortal mind he is melded with, 
leaving the hapless would-be traitor a drooling, vertigo-smitten victim, able to speak and reason only slowly and haltingly, and so, extremely vulnerable to almost any hostile being. If he finds loyalty, he will be delighted, for he sees the road to achieving his aim of drow supremacy as necessitating acceptance of his guidance and that of the mortal drow who serve him by non-drow. He will mark such a mind with a boon, typically dark vision, or for a gifted mortal, the ability to cast dancing lights at will or darkness or fairy fire once every 48 hours from the moment of their last casting of a magic he's conferred. This boon is not entirely generous, but also serves to alert all drow. Varon intends it for his followers, but it works for drow of any primary loyalty that this individual is his. That is, that he favors this being and they are loyal to him. This is what enables a non-drow wannabe cleric of Varon to find acceptance in the ranks of his church. They will never be entirely trusted, as in they may well be trusted with dangerous important tasks or missions by senior priests who see them as inherently expendable, but they will always be watched, both overtly and covertly. But so long as they accept their subservient role, they will be accepted. Varon himself has bolstered this acceptance by protecting such non-drow priests personally in situations where he manifests, and clearly by his words and deeds caring about their health, safety, and welfare. When one of his senior drow priests, Alant Erlar of Athkatla, asked the god why he did this, Varon replied, to lead and rule others means we must value those others. A shepherd who cares not for the sheep is no worthy shepherd. By valuing our livestock, we increase our own value and demonstrate to all our fitness to lead all other creatures. Yet, the question has been asked and can be asked again. Varon's non-drow clergy are accepted, but accepted to do what exactly? First, the Church of Varon wants non-drow priests exclusively for service in the night above, the surface world, not down in the Underdark. Second, while serving Varon in the surface world, they are not to waste time in empty piety, that is, long prayers and rituals, but to briefly, verbally de dedicate the work they are assigned to Varon, who guides us all true, and to do deeds as instructed by superiors. This tireless ongoing service was to promote work together, particularly in cities, between elves and drow in smuggling. Thievery, tax avoidance through deception, that is, forged documents and impersonations, and other work against surface authority, and in legitimate trade, often through non-drow representatives, to conceal growing local drow power that would make drow richer in both coin and property ownership, for example, city buildings, stronger in influence and constantly brought to the attention of non-drow. This work must always recognize drow males and females as equals and must thwart the servants and agents of Loth whenever possible. The divisions and infighting she constantly promotes are to be curbed at every turn. Drow males who desire more power, but dare not openly defy Loth and her priestesses, are to be covertly aided so long as they give, brief, verbal, thanks to Varon. Lord of Shadows, I thank thee. In such work, non-drow priests of the Lord of Shadow are often issued with enchanted masks, molded and magically stiffened cloth masks that adhere to the face of the wearer, burning their flesh if they aren't loyal to Varon, or are of good alignment. These typically augment a wearer's own magical powers and abilities, conferring feather falling and limited protection against magical damage, but almost always wear out after a 10 day or so, their powers fading fast from the midpoint of the 11th day from when a mask received its last enchantment. Drow clergy are increasingly given such masks too. 
Direct aid from the deity may come in the form of the deity himself, in avatar form, or a mockingly laughing flying mask that dispenses advice or limited spell aid, but most often takes the form of a flitting shadow. These black, amorphous flying wisps of divine manifestation come but once a day to a particular individual, and his clergy calls them blessing shadows. They often fly to and then cling to the face of the mortal Veron wants to aid for nine minutes or so you're fading away, enshrouding it like a cloth half mask covering the upper half of the face. Even when there are no visible eye holes, the wearer can freely see through it. While they are in contact with the being Veron wishes to aid, whether serving as a mask or not, that individual has true seeing, moves silently and as if under an active pass without trace spell, can keep their footing, not be pushed, shoved, or knocked over under any circumstances. They can stand their ground if they want to, or freely retreat as if enjoying free action, and can hit and harm targets who are otherwise immune to mundane weapons. The initial touch of a blessing shadow can also confer 3d8 hit points of healing if the being Veron favors is wounded and all damage suffered by its recipient before it fades is halved. So, that's a first look at what it is to kneel to the Lord of Shadow if you're not a drow. We'll likely delve deeper into Veron's clergy in a future video, but there are so many other Realms lore questions to answer first. So as always, Realms forever. Gotta give him the drow, man! Mm -hmm. They all want the drow! Yep. <laughs> Drow and Elicids, Drow and Elicids and Elminster, Drow and Elicids and Elminster. You've been getting Drow and Elicids this time. Yeah, well, that, well fused with me. Yeah. Yeah, how else do you fuse? <laughs> what a cutie. All right, worshipping Veyron, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, worshipping Veyron. 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 Veyron, thank you. But if I say it bad, it makes it sound really cool when you say it right. Okay. No, I'm just yeah, no problem. I'm easy. <laughs> Are you too hot? Do you need to leave the room? And we are doing something. All right. Whenever you're ready, big sexy. Okay.